Friendly readers, I am happy to present to you, as long as I can get away with it, a Storytime special presentation of Washington Irving's Rip Van Winkle. Catskill Mountains have always been one of those few places filled with magic and mystery and strange, unexplained happenings. The early Dutch settlers felt it the moment they first arrived, and a few of them even fell victim to the magic of the mountains. Such a man was simple, good-natured Rip Van Winkle. man, Mr. Van Winkle, always willing to help. Yes. He's the most obliging person. Oh, thank you indeed. Well, tis the least I can do. Good day to you both. Good day. All this work has made me a bit thirsty, Wolf. What would you say to a pint of lunch, eh? And can you think of a finer place to take it than under the sign of His Majesty King George III? It's the one place in this village where we always meet with good friends. Aha, Rip Lad, what brings you here? <laughs> the pleasure of your companies, gentlemen. Is there anything else? Only one. This. <laughs> oh, yes. And what's new, Rip? Well, I hear King George is on holiday in Europe. I wish he'd visit us here. He'd find many loyal subjects. Ah, you're a royalist through and through. Have you no mind for independence? Can't you forget politics for one minute, schoolmaster? I hear tell that Mr. Brew had a bad scare in the mountains. Oh, that's so. Swears he saw himself walking along through the trees. I go there a lot, as you know, to shoot and to fish. Yet I've never experienced any trouble. Well, you're about to experience some trouble, you good-for-nothing. Lying about here all day when there's goodness knows how much work to be done on the farm. You're no better. None of you are, lazy layabouts. Come along, Rip Van Winkle. There's work to be done. That includes you, too, you fool dog. <laughs> That woman is a tartar. How does poor Rip stand it? She's got the sharpest tongue I've ever heard, and that's saying something if you've ever heard my wife. And by golly, I've heard a plenty of stuff. You're never slow to help anyone else in their chores. And yet you refuse to tend to your own. You're a scoundrel, sir. Look at the state of this place. The south field needs plowing and sowing. The fence is broken. And the cows have got out and eaten all the cabbages. Have you no ambition? Have you no pride? Hello, Father. Hello, Father. Hello, my children. And what have you been doing today? Oh, nothing much. See? They're as bad as you. Good for nothing and bone idle. It's about time you all started to get the farm into order. You promised to fix the porch and all the salary needs tending to and the plow needs straightening and... All right, all right. I'll just go and get some tools. Well, be quick about it. 
Mountains, Judith, to shoot us something for dinner. But don't tell Mother, will you? I want to surprise her. Good to see you. And even better knowing that you can't speak. I'm sick of hearing voices. And one in particular, eh, Wolf? Oh, my. It's nearly nightfall. If we don't get back soon, imagine Dane Van Winkle scolding. There's nothing I dread more than hearing her calling. I say. Who's there? Oh. Good evening, small sir. For some, perhaps. Well, uh, don't just stand there staring. Uh, carry this. What? Oh, I... uh, Come on, come on. Well, come on. Were you the one that called me? Called you? <laughs> Don't ask questions of me, Van Winkle. <laughs> Careful there. That keg you carry and treat so lightly contains a fluid more precious than gold. Sun is shining, though. Or could it be Dame Van Winkle calling for us? <laughs> Don't speak unless I ask you, you hear? Stop it, 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 stop it. Yeah. <laughs> 
Don't speak! Stop it! Stop it! We don't want the noise and prattle of your civilization up here. Oh, sorry. You're speaking again! Stop it! Stop it! Come and join us at Nine Pins. What a unique style. Marvelous. Uh, where did you learn that style? Well done. Now, enough of these games. I have some questions. Just answer them and nothing more. How are things in the outside world? As usual, always too much work to be done and no inclination with which to carry it out. Do you farm? Not really. My farm is on perhaps the worst piece of ground in the whole of America. Does that sadden you? Not really. Because it's so bad, there's no real reason to stay around there each day. So I go to the village and... To what advantage? I escape my wife. Your wife? You don't like her? <laughs> no, it's not her so much as her evil disposition and her nagging ways. Her tongue is the only tool I know of that gets sharper with use. I say, that is good. Don't talk until you're spoken to. Stop it, stop it, stop it. I can't tell you again, you know. So, your wife makes life difficult for you, eh? Yes. Yes, she's rather short with me. Oh. We're short with everyone. <laughs> 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 that's you, that's true. My great uncle, Mr. Vetter, was with Peter Stuyvesant when he first arrived in New York. Oh, the Indians then were... All right, you men. Where's my useless husband? Don't try to hide him. Uh, my dear Dame Van Winkle, we have not seen Rip since you yourself took him so abruptly from our midst this very morning. He went off this afternoon to hunt in the mountains. <gasps> the, the mountains, indeed. Risky that. And I've seen not hide nor hair of him since then. Strange things happen in the mountains, good Dame. I trust no evil has befallen him. Evil? Ha! The lazy fool has probably tarried too long and got lost. Oh, I'll give him what for when I get my hands on his idle body. I feel most secure in the knowledge that nothing quite so terrifying as having Dame Van Winkle out after me is ever likely to befall me in my tranquil existence. The mere thought makes my old blood run colder than usual. Come out, Rip Van Winkle, or it'll be all the worse for you, that I promise. I'll box your ears by my faith, I will, and you'll get naught but trouble from me for a long time to come. Come out, sir, immediately. Rip, Rip Van Winkle, where are you, you old fool? Rip? <laughs> Tell me I've slept here all night. Oh, no. 
My wife will be furious beyond belief. Oh, my life will be a misery. That strange drink. Oh, that evil, wicked brew. Uh, uh, what's this? And where's Wolf? Those strange little men. They've played some kind of trick on me. Oh, the damp must have got into my bones last night. Where can that dog be? Wolf, here, boy. Come on, boy. Oh, oh, I feel so hungry. And I'll not be getting much food cooked by my wife, that's for sure. Perhaps I'll go to the village and trust my luck there. But I, I was here last night. Right here. Oh, what's happened? I must be going mad. Yesterday it was spring, and now it's fall. Oh, what have those small evil men done to my life? And to the seasons? And to the mountains? Oh, I must get out of here. These mountains are haunted by spirits with a most untimely sense of humor. you that if you vote me into Congress, I will make a few of the changes so needed around here. Free schooling for the children is one of my main objects, and I shall achieve this. Goodness, what is that? An apparition. He must have come down from the mountains. But, but, he... what? could this be my village? What's happened to the houses? The roads seem much wider than before. And those people. Oh, silly old man. 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 Silly I think I've been bewitched. That flagon last night was more than mere wine. You there, sir. You have interrupted my speech. So tell me, what are your politics and preferences? My allegiance is to King George, God bless him. Why? King George? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? Is that why you come with a gun over your shoulder to interfere with a freedom of speech and incite riot? You are a royalist, sir. A royalist? Oh, oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. No, please. I've, I've only come to find a few of my neighbors. Who were these neighbors you were looking for? Well, Nicholas Vedder, for one. Why, he's been dead these past 18 years. You would have recognized that fact by the wooden tombstone over his grave in the churchyard. But now that's rotted and gone as well. 18 years, you say? Years? Well, what of Brom Dutcher? He went off with the army when the war began. Some say he met his fate at the storming of Stony Point. Uh, others say he drowned in a squall at the foot of Anthony's nose. <gasps> well, then, what news of Van Brummel, the schoolmaster? Oh, he went off to the wars, too. He was perhaps the greatest militia general of all. And now? <gasps> Why, he's in Congress. Uh, all dead. And a war. And Congress? Ah, uh, me. Uh, does anyone here know of the name Rip Van Winkle? Ah, oh, yeah. There he is. Let's him in. <laughs> Who asks after me? And who, may we ask, are you? That's me there. Or should be. It was yesterday. 
I mean, it, I fell asleep in the mountains last night, and someone has played a fearful trick on me. They aged my clothes and swapped my gun for... for this. And they've left me with no name and no friends. Everything's changed. I've changed. I don't know who I am anymore. Hush, darling. The old man won't hurt you. Quiet now, Rip. Excuse me, dear woman, but what is your name? It's Judith Gardner. Judith, you say? And your father's. What was his name? His name was Rip Van Winkle. The poor dear man. He left home one day and never returned. His dog came back, but not he nor word of him. That was over 20 years ago now. Oh, Judith. Judith, my dear daughter. I am Rip Van Winkle. Young yesterday and old today, certainly. But Rip Van Winkle nevertheless. Uh, doesn't anyone here remember old Rip Van Winkle? Tis you indeed, Rip Van Winkle. Well, welcome home, old neighbor. Where have you been? Oh, Father, how wonderful. A miracle. You must come and stay with us now. Oh, my heavens, I almost forgot. Where's your mother? Oh, she's dead. It happened only a little while ago. Oh. That's right, Father. She burst a blood vessel yelling at a cheating New England peddler. Poor woman, but a fitting end. It would appear my long sleep had one advantage anyway. Come along, Father. But where have you been? Where were you? Now, where did you go? What happened? Where have I been these past 20 years? Sleeping peacefully, that's where. Sleeping? Where? But how? Sleeping, you say? Ask me not how. For I don't believe the circumstances myself. But let me say this. If you find yourself in the mountains and you hear thunder when the sun is shining and the sky is clear, don't satisfy your curiosity by trying to find from whence the sound comes. Just run home and forget your purpose. Or you may end up like me. Forgetting a great deal more. <laughs>